Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Greg Fritz has been changing lives through the good news of the gospel for over 35 years. This good news will inspire, inform, and change you so you can live daily in all the promises of God. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, this is Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We've been teaching uh, teaching on the receiving God's best. And I'm excited about this series of teachings. We're going to take, take several episodes to really get into the subject of what I call four different words, law and works, grace and faith. These truths are primarily taught in the epistles. And this teaching is going to help you understand and develop a deeper appreciation for Paul's epistles than ever before. That you can read these letters written to the church. That's what an epistle is. It's a letter written to the church. <laughs> I say this, you need to read an epistle so you can think like an apostle. The apostles wrote the epistles, the letters to the church, so that you could learn how to think in the new covenant. Learn how to think like a new covenant believer. Learn how to receive God's best. Learn how to get the things that God has made available to us. And so these uh, teachings, as I said, are based on understanding the difference between law and works, grace and faith. And the Bible was written at a time of, of, of when, when this season was changing, when they were going from old to new. And because of that, these words are scattered throughout the epistles and, and the New Testament. Jesus introduced it in several places, and the, the apostles followed up with it. This teaching is valuable to you, and will, maybe it will show you some areas that you could change some thinking that you could change in order to uh, just be more efficient in God's kingdom. Mark 4, 24, which is the scripture we're using, says, To him who hears, more will be given. And that's really the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, you had to do something to get something. In the New Testament, you have to hear something to get something. And the things we get now are so much better than what they had then. But if you hear, and the, and the teaching you're need, you need to hear is in the epistles. When you hear and believe, you can receive God's best. So that's kind of a synopsis of where we've been. What we're, what we're doing right now is finishing up a little bit of teaching on the law, the historical significance of the law of Moses, what it was, why was it given. And we said that the law, because the scriptures will mention the word law over and over and over again, the law, Moses' law, was given to bring men to Christ. Even though his name was not mentioned, that was the purpose of it. And it was, it was for 1,500 years, it was in effect, from Moses to Jesus. It was given to, to bring men to Christ or prepare people for the Messiah, the Savior who was coming. That was God's intention. So there were three things that it did. Number one, it revealed or it defined sin. Number one, the law defined sin. Here's what, here's what sin and righteousness is. It started with the Ten Commandments and it went on. Uh, 613 rules and regulations were listed in the Law of Moses. The first five books of the Bible is where you'll find it, the Pentateuch. And in those books, you find this whole legal system that consisted of 613 different rules and regulations. Also, the, the Ten Commandments was involved, and that's really the moral uh, part of the law. And, and those things are still important, but we should literally fulfill the Ten Commandments today just by living for Jesus, just living the life that God put in us, letting God live through us. The Ten Commandments are a piece of cake. Um, so it defined sin. It revealed universal guilt. And number three, it was fulfilled in Christ. This is an important aspect of the law because Jesus was misunderstood by the Jewish leaders simply because he didn't, uh, he didn't see the law the same way they did. They saw it as an end in itself. He realized he was going to fulfill it. All the types and shadows in the law pointed to Jesus. He was the, what the law was describing. When the law described righteousness, when the law described relating to others, it was describing Jesus. He was the fulfillment of the law. He was the law in the flesh, God in the flesh. He was the righteousness of God in a man. And so he looked at it differently. 
He came to literally fulfill it. And I'll give you these scriptures, Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Jesus said, do not think that I came to destroy the law. The reason he said that is because they did think that. Because he didn't have the same you know, view toward the law as they did. They made it a religion and it was their life. It was their world. Jesus realized this is just a part of what God's doing. And he's about to change things forever. So he said, I didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law until all is fulfilled. And so he was the one who fulfilled all of the law. So this is interesting. It's like God said, do this, 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 and this, and you'll get all these blessings. And knowing that if they tried to do all these commands, they would fail. So really, in that sense, nobody qualified for any of the blessings of God. Nobody. Everybody failed. It proved universal guilt. I told you that in, in Acts 15, uh, Peter talked about this, and he called the law a yoke that neither us nor our fathers were able to bear. Everyone failed when it came to keeping the law. That was supposed to open them to the idea, open them up to the idea of a Savior or be looking for a Savior. Notice in, in Deuteronomy 28, I want to take this passage and then I want to come forward to Galatians 3. And, and, and right now, here's what we're talking about is how did Jesus fulfill the law? Or how did people come to Christ by Jesus fulfilling the law? So let's get this. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. It says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commands which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And then he begins to list all of these blessings. These are going to be yours because you keep the law. Well, nobody could keep the law. So he went on to say in verse 15, if you, But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commandments and His statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. And then he begins to list all these curses. Well, we said before, James said, if you break one law, you're guilty of all of it. And nobody kept all the law except Jesus. So you have every single person that ever tried to keep this law. Paul said it was a yoke that, or Peter said it was a yoke that neither our, us nor our fathers could bear. James said if you break one rule, you're guilty of all of the law, being a lawbreaker. Everyone fell short of the law. So by definition, according to Deuteronomy 28, then this is what they get. It shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commands and His statutes, all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. So according to the law, it, it, everybody was under a curse. Everybody failed to keep the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law, and He did fulfill it. Every jot and every tittle was fulfilled in Christ. Therefore, Jesus was the rightful heir to all the blessings. In other words, we talk about how you can't earn the blessing of God. You can't earn the favor of God. You can't earn the love of God. But Jesus did earn it. Now, He already had it, of course, but li He literally earned it. So the law served as a system of rules and regulations that Jesus Himself fulfilled. By fulfilling the law, He became an heir to all the blessings of God. He earned them. Now, they were His already, but He came as a man, and as a man, He worked through the system and literally earned what we could never earn. He did what we could never do, and thereby conveying, transferring God's blessings to us who do really nothing except believe on Jesus. And by doing that, we become one with Him. This system is powerful. It all works in our favor. All of these things that men struggled with for generations, all the things that animals died to, 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 to extend another year, all of this, the, the mosaic rules and regulate, all of that served a purpose to bring us to Christ. 
But the ultimate purpose was that Jesus would come and fulfill it and become the heir of God. Now, I had this experience. Uh, these things will cause your faith to soar. I'm telling you, knowing that God loves you, knowing that God's healing is for you, knowing that salvation is for it's one thing. But when you begin to understand how God did this, what uh, efforts He went to to make His blessings yours, your faith just goes through the roof. I had this experience in children's church. I was a children's church pastor for two years. I was 16 and 17, and I did children's church every week. And uh, I had this illustration. It really went over good in children's church. I'm not sure how well it would do with adults. But anyway, I got up and I would tell them, uh, I, I, I made this statement. I said to the children, I have a candy bar. And I, I would just stand there, just like I always did. No, nothing, no props, nothing in my hand. I didn't even have my Bible in my hand. I was just standing there empty-handed. And I said, I have a candy bar. And the first person up here, to, to touch my hand, gets the candy bar. And I did this in many different places with many different children, and it always worked the same way. After I said that, nobody moved. <laughs> and I'd have to say it two or three times, and maybe one person would move forward and, and take the chance that maybe I wasn't going to make a joke out of them or I wasn't leading them astray. Nobody would move based on that. And, and you know, I said, have I ever lied to you? Am I, don't you believe me? Do you not trust me? I have a candy bar and, and whoever comes up here first can have it. And they just wouldn't move. And then when one wouldn't move, another wouldn't move. And then they, then it became a standoff. Nobody's going to move now because nobody else moved. And it just was very difficult. And, and I did it for a point. I said, now, let me give you some more information. That's what's happening here. I'm telling you, if you'll get into the epistles you can think like an apostle and you can start receiving from God and there'll be no end to what God can do in your life. But if we don't really understand the new covenant, then the Bible's just a bunch of disjointed promises that you better believe or else God's healing is for you. God's salvation is for you. You just have to take his word for it and that's it. But you know what? It would be enough if God just said it. It would be enough. We ought to be able to just take God at his word. But in the Bible, you find an explanation. You get the history. You get the nuts and bolts. And that increases your faith. There's what I did. I couldn't get anybody to move. Maybe one brave soul every now and then would come forward timidly and touch my hand to try to get my prize. But then I said, let me give you some more information. Before this service began, before I got to church, I went by a convenience store and I bought a Snickers bar a nice big jumbo Snickers bar. And before I came into class, I put it behind my shirt. I untucked my shirt and I tucked it in my shirt behind my back because I knew I was going to make this offer. And then I came to Children's Church. It's been there the whole time. It's there right now. And I gave you this offer and I'm going to give it again. Whoever comes up here first and touches my hand can, can have this free Snickers bar. I was mobbed. People rushed the front. They gathered around. They grabbed me. I'm first. I'm first. I'm first. And, and there was no difference physically. There was nothing different except I gave them more information. I told them what the candy bar was, how I got it, and how it got there. And, and then I said, whoever touches my hand first can have it. I never deceived them before or mistreated them or had them think one thing and do another. I, I'd always been honest with them and my words should have been enough. The fact that I told them they could have a free candy bar if they touched my hand first, that, that should have been enough. But it really wasn't. For whatever reason, they had a hard time overcoming that. But with just a little more information, they became firm believers that I had a candy bar and, and I was going to give it away and they wanted to be the one that got it. And I think it's true with God's Word. God has made statements in His Word that are absolutely true, but it's difficult for people to break that barrier for whatever reason. In other words, you ever heard your parents say, do this, and you say, why? Because I said so. Or this is how it is, because I said so. Well, God's not, He's not taken that approach, even though He could. He could give us no explanation. He could give us no historical background. He could just say, I'm God. This is how it is. Take it or leave it. But God gives us so much history. 
He leads us up to the point of Christ's coming. And then he shows us exactly why Jesus is able to bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He shows us how the blessings became ours. And it's right here in Deuteronomy 28. Let's read it again. Let's read Deuteronomy 28 and, and verse 1. Let me get back there. Deuteronomy 28. Verse 1, it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, observe carefully all His commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Now, nobody's obeyed all of those commandments except Jesus. Jesus did exactly what, <laughs> what the old covenant required, Therefore, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. He earned them all. He is the healed, the blessed, the provided for, the, the one who has authority, who is the heir of all the blessings of God. Jesus earned it. So he's the heir. Now, when we believe in him, we're joint heirs with Jesus. He's an heir, we're joint heirs. He's done all the work, we get all the benefit because of what He did. That's how God made these blessings yours. It makes sense, doesn't it? The law could not make them yours because in, under the law, you had to work to earn them and nobody could do that except Jesus. So the law served as, a, as, as a, an impossible series of requirements that nobody could meet except Jesus. Jesus. Jesus came and met them. No wonder it's done away with. The law's been fulfilled. The test has been completed. He aced it, and there's no need for it. All the blessings are His. And now we've moved into a new age where that's all fulfilled its purpose. It's set aside, and now everybody can receive everything that God has through Christ. That's how He did it. So Galatians says it this way, verse 14. Now, Galatians is going to make so much more sense to you now. It's such a powerful, powerful verse. In verse 14, it says, "...that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles." The blessing of Abraham is what's described in Deuteronomy 28. All those blessings are, are the blessings of the children of Abraham. Abraham. Those blessings now can come on the Gentiles in, in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Isn't that great? Galatians 3.25 says, "...after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor." Because he'd already said the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ. So you can see that Jesus fulfilled all the rules and requirements. Jesus earned all the blessings of God. That had to be done in order for God to get them to us. So it's not a candy bar behind your back. It's Jesus and it's receiving Jesus by faith that, that, that we become partakers of all the blessings of God. Rightfully so. Not because of what we did but because of what he did. We had 1,500 years of legalism to prove that we couldn't do it, that mankind was not good enough to earn the blessings of God. Then, at a moment in time, Christ came. He fulfilled the law. He earned the blessings of God. And then he said, anybody who receives me gets everything I get. But you can't earn it. And once you receive me, you can't go back and try to pay for it. You can't go back and put yourself under another set of rules and regulations because all that's over. Look at this. This is a, a, a side note, but it's important because it is mentioned in Galatians. If you go back to Galatians 3.16, he mentions this. It says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say as to seeds, as of many, but as of one, to your seed who is Christ. Now that's a little wordy, but it's there. And you're going to read this when you read Galatians. And, and you might as well, you know, understand it. And it might as well register uh, with your spirit when you read it. Notice this. He said he made the promise to Abraham and his seed, singular, not plural. Then in verse 19, he says, Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Well, the seed was Jesus. He went on to say, and to your seed, who is Christ? So what he's saying is that God made all these promises, the, 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 the broad range of promises that, that are in the law, which are covered in Deuteronomy 28 and other places. All of the blessings of the, 
you know, the, the, the law that's kept, the rules that are kept, the law that's fulfilled, all those blessings are made to Abraham and his seed. He said, not seeds, but seed, one, who is Christ. So what he's saying is, from the very beginning, God already knew what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my man into the world and through that man, he's going to earn the blessings. He's going to earn my inheritance. He's going to earn my favor. He's going to earn my love. He's going to fulfill every requirement and all of the blessings of heaven are going to be that one man and then I'll take everybody else and allow them to connect to him. And through faith in him, they too now can receive all the blessings of God but not as if they'd earned them, not as if they'd gone back and kept the law because they couldn't and they didn't and they never will be, but because He did. Do you see the difference? It's just a change of thinking, but it's so important in the New Testament to realize it's not about what we did, it's all about what He did. So there was a law and it was fulfilled, but not by us. It was fulfilled by Jesus. So now, fast forward, we can read all of these blessings, all of these promises, all of this inheritance, all of the good things of God, and say, they're mine. But you've got to add these two words, through Christ. They're mine, through Christ. They're not mine through works. They're not mine through determination. They're not mine because I've suffered more than anyone else. We put all kinds of works between us and the blessings of God. And there's only one thing between us and the blessings of God. It's Jesus and faith in Jesus that opens the windows of heaven to you. I want to see you receive God's best, and I know that it's available. I know there's more than you've ever imagined. There's more than you've ever experienced in your life, and there's more to come. But it all comes the same way, through Christ. That means you can't start with Jesus and then fall back into some kind of legalistic, religious thinking. You've got to stay with, with Jesus. You've got to realize that what God did for me, He did through Christ. And that's what we're really trying to avoid. We're trying to help people not to interpret their walk with God and their, and, and their receiving from God based on what they've done, what they've done wrong, what they've done right, what they've done, uh, you know, that mattered, what didn't matter. It's so hard to get people to leave that behind and say, you know what, it's mine through Christ. It's mine because of what He did. I believe in Jesus, therefore all things have been given to me. If God gave us His own Son, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? In other words, there's nothing that God won't do for you uh, that He's already done through Christ. He gave us everything that heaven had to offer through Jesus Christ. Let me give you a few of these promises that talk about receiving God's best. 2 Corinthians 1.20, All the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Isn't that powerful? That, there's just no limit. In fact, when you go from Old Testament to New, when you go from Old Covenant to New, here's some things that are different. In the Old Testament, there's limits, standards, bare minimums. You better do this or else. In the New Testament, you read words like all and every and evermore and forever. There's no limits. God just removes all the limits and He begins to give us all that He has to every person forevermore. No limits. And, and it's so hard to get people to think that way because once they start this Christian walk, they've had bad days, they've, had, they've made mistakes, they've had failures, and they, all, they let these things talk them out of God's best. We've got to go back to the fundamentals. We've got to go back to the ABCs of redemption. This is all true because of Jesus, because of what He did. All the promises of God in Him are what? Yes. And in him, amen, but you don't know. No, there is no but. But you don't know what I did. You don't know. No, there is no but. All the promises of God in Jesus, he did it. He fulfilled the law, not you. He earned the blessings, not you. So the things that, that other people, other religions, religious thinking, the, the religious systems, the things they're working for, the things they're striving to receive, they're already ours in Christ. They're trying to be so good that God would love them, that God would embrace them, that God would bless them. We've already got that. We start where all these other religions are trying to end. We start with God's love. We start with His favor. We start with His blessings. That's ours. 
Not because of what we did, but because of what Jesus did. I quoted this one, who did not spare, this is Romans 8.32, who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Man, does that not go with the theme of receiving God's best, receiving everything that God has for us? It comes the same way through Jesus. John 1.16 says, And of His fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. The New Living Translation says, From His abundance we have all received, one gracious blessing after another. Isn't that great? I mean, the blessings just keep coming from God if you'll let them. If you don't let works, bad works, guilt, Shame stand in the way if you'll just continue down this road where Jesus did it. I've received him by faith. Now all the things that God has are mine. If you'll do that, there's no limit. Listen to what the Amplified says, John 1, 16. Out of his fullness, we have all received. We've all had a share. We're all supplied with one grace after another and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, even favor upon favor and gift heaped upon gift. Isn't that great? Oh, it all comes by grace through faith because of what Jesus did. I want you to receive God's best. I want, to, I want you to walk in more of God's blessings than you ever have before. And I believe this teaching is what you need to get there. And so do me a favor. Make plans to be with us in our next episode as we take this teaching further on how to receive God's best. In this teaching, you'll learn how to leave the law and religion behind to receive God's very best in your life. Receive your free copy of this series by visiting our website, gregfritz.org, and use code FREE at checkout. I want to take a minute to tell you about a new offer that we have for you. Uh, this teaching on receiving God's best is powerful. It has really impacted me as, even as I've prepared it for you. And I decided to do something we've never done before. I'm going to take these 20 episodes on this teaching and give them to you absolutely free. Uh, it will be in downloadable audio which you can download it to your computer and then put it on your device in an mp3 or streaming videos you can have the videos on your device wherever you are and watch and hear these messages on receiving God's best go to my website it's under the, the it's on the home page under the tab free downloads go there and get your free teaching on this subject today remember receive your free copy at our website gregfritz.org Coming up next on Good News with Greg Fritz. That if you don't learn how to receive from God by faith, not only will you not get any more, but you'll have a hard time holding on to what you have. Faith is the victory. Faith is the way to receive from God today. Law and legalism has been set aside. Now we have faith in Jesus and we become what God wants us to be by His power, by faith. In other words, here's a good one, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. Isn't that good? His power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through knowledge. It's amazing today. It, it's so hard to get people to believe this, but it's true. His, the good things of God are now available to you today through knowledge, not through works, not through effort, not through sacrifice, not through suffering. Watch Greg Fritz Monday through Friday on GospelTruth.tv for more good news.